Hey, you want to see how to witness to an atheist? Watch this video and then do exactly the opposite because this isn't going to get you anywhere. Christians have nothing else though, and this is why they fail virtually every time. They're not interested in reality. In fact, they're positively terrified of it, and this is why they're losing. It's really not that difficult to see. So today we're going to take a look at a short video from a channel called Core Christianity, and our host is going to answer a question from a caller. The issue is, though, it's a really terrible answer that anyone with half a clue will see right through. And that's why these people only appeal to the weak-willed and weak-minded pathetic losers, you know, Christians. So let's get through this and see why these people aren't impressing anyone. Away we go. Here's a voicemail that came in from one of our listeners named Jerry. I have a couple of questions. Number one, I have four or five atheist friends I've been praying for, and I guess my question is what, what more can I do or what can I do to bring them to God, to help them to get to know God? Well, you could actually have evidence for the silly things that you believe. That would be a pretty good start. Of course, our apologist here won't suggest that because, as we all know, there is no evidence for Christianity or any other religion out there. No good evidence, anyhow. Oh, some of them like to think that there is, but they don't really know what evidence is or what we're looking for, mostly because they just don't care. However, I'm happy to give people a chance to prove me wrong even though I think we all know that's just not going to happen. So let's see how this guy thinks you ought to witness to an atheist. This ought to be good. One of my sons is not going to church anymore. I want to know what can I do to, to help him. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Well, how do you know that your son doesn't have a point? Because this is where we know that the religious simply know absolutely nothing about atheism or what atheists want or expect or think or anything else. Because they just don't care. This is all just emotional pablum for them. And they believe, not because it seems remotely true, but because they really, 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 really wish that it was so. Yet, all the wishes and dreams in the world don't get you anywhere useful. It doesn't get you to factual reality. And for most atheists, most rational atheists, that's what we care about. Because we actually are concerned if the crap in our heads is actually indicative of objective reality. You actually have to care how these things match up with objective demonstrable reality. And we all know that the religious, simply put, don't. Not one bit. And that's kind of sad, isn't it? Hmm. Well, God bless you, brother, as you seek to share the love of Jesus Christ with the people around you, uh, with your atheist friends, and, and as you long to see your children also uh, walk in the faith and know and love Jesus. So, in other words, you want to spread the dogmatic bullshit that you've had stuffed into your head with no corroboratory evidence whatsoever because it makes you feel good. Now, I wouldn't say if they had anything of substance to present, but we all know that they don't. How many times have you been there waiting for them to trot out something decent, something objectively verifiable, only to be horribly disappointed once again by sad, pathetic, religious tripe. I don't even expect them to do anything worthwhile anymore because I've been disappointed so many times before. I'd love to see Christians make a good faith effort, but they don't, because I don't think they even understand how. They're just throwing shit out there because it makes them happy, not because they have a good reason to think that any of it is true. 
All they can do is read to me from their silly books, make a lot of empty claims, come up with a ton of emotional appeals, and issue ridiculous impotent threats, because that's all they've got. It's really quite sad. None of that is going to get them anywhere. And I'm hoping that somewhere out there, there's a theist who can actually do better. I'm not holding my breath, but I'm hoping, because somewhere there's got to be, right? And I think you're off to a right start, uh, a good start. Prayer is so important. Um, we need to realize that this is a work of the Holy Spirit. People don't get saved because we twist their arms um, or, you know, are able to fully convince them with our, you know, special abilities that this is just totally true. Even even being able to grasp, you know, to confess Jesus is Lord, that's a work of the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul told the Corinthians. No one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In other words, you've got nothing. And that's really the problem, and I've pointed this out forever, that the religious know they've got nothing, and they're just making excuses for why they fail so miserably so often. You didn't fail. God did. It's not your fault. Don't feel bad because it's not really your job. Yet that's not true. It just isn't. I don't care what it says in your stupid fucking book. The fact is, you people are just really, really, really terrible at this, and it's no wonder that you screw up so often because you've got nothing of substance to say. Not only do they lie to us, they lie to each other and themselves. It's the entire belief system based solely on bullshit, and they can't see it. But we can. We can see it quite clearly. They can't. And that's utterly pathetic, isn't it? And so continue to fall before the Lord and to say, God, do the work that only you can do and realize that this is a spiritual battle. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Yeah, but 1 Peter 3.15 is very specific. To quote just the important bits, it says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Yet, they are singularly terrible at that, if you notice. I would love to know the reasons for their beliefs, but they don't have any good reasons, and they're only too happy to lie to you about it or downplay it because their actual reasons are just laughably ridiculous. Well, it just makes me happy. But that's just stupid. No rational belief is based on your fifis. You can't walk out the door in the morning and say, well, I believe gravity exists because it makes me happy. No, that's stupid, yet that's exactly what the religious are doing all of the time. And the second you point that out to them, either they deny it and pretend they've got something else that they can never actually present, or they get really upset and they hurl insults and pathetic threats your way, or in the case of some of the fanatics, possible physical attacks, because they just can't deal with the abject weakness of their own beliefs. Really, what the hell is wrong with these people? For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, with ourselves as servants for your sake, for Christ's sake. And so I, I bring this up to, to highlight, one, you, you need to pray because it is a spiritual battle. But two, focus on the gospel because the power is in the word. God uses his word to open the hearts of people, to to chip away at the, the, the stony hearts, to reveal the glory of Christ. That's what Paul is talking about there in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Yeah, it doesn't actually work that way in reality, sorry. Because these people have absolutely no grasp on how reality works. They're counting on finding pathetic, gullible people who are willing to go on pure emotion and not expecting anything better. And when they run into atheists who know all of their tricks and aren't remotely impressed— 
they've got nothing of value to offer. It's why every single discussion I ever have with a theist ends with them running away with their tails tucked firmly between their legs, hurling childish insults behind them. It's because we're just not impressed with what they've brought to the table, so in a fit of infantile rage, they want to flip the table over and stomp away in a huff. I find advice like this positively pointless, but as I keep saying, they're not making these videos for us. They're making them for the gullible idiots in their audience. And I'm not sure why that's supposed to impress anyone. So I think those two things are, are what you need to focus on, continuing to pray. But when you have opportunities, clearly sharing the gospel with them, what Christ has done, who he is, the fact that he rose again from the dead and commands all people everywhere to repent. It's not just about something that, that they feel or something they gain in terms of, hey, Christianity can help you have a happier life, that kind of thing. No, uh, we believe that God himself sent his son into the world and his son suffered for our sins and then rose again from the dead and he's alive right now and this demands something of each and every person who is alive on earth. Yeah, except that's just stupid. That's the kind of problem that they have. They believe absurd bullcrap and they don't really understand why everyone else doesn't just magically buy into it too. Now, if they were in fact remotely rational, which they're not, they'd be able to step back and say, hey, wait a second and realize just how stupid all of this sounds to anybody who isn't already part of their silly club. But they can't. They've got their rituals and their blind faith, and that's all that they want, but they can't understand that we want a whole lot more, and if they want to try to convince us, they need to be a whole lot better than they are, but they aren't. They can't be because they've just got a load of bullshit in their heads. And this is the problem where I point out to the religious that, hey, if somebody else came up to you from another religion, maybe even a religion you've never heard of before, and said the exact same things to you that you're saying to us, would you take that seriously? And the answer, I hope, because I can't believe these people are really that dumb, would be, fuck no! But these people are stupid, and this is why they have so many problems. That's the sad bit, because they really can't be any better. They can't be any more convincing than they already are, and we're not impressed at all by the crap that they've got. And that's why they work the way that they do, because they don't have anything else. It's why they have so little luck against the rational and the skeptical. And for some reason, they can't get that shit through their heads. And so, and so it's that gospel message, brother, that you continue to bring forward uh, in the lives of your friends and in the lives of your children. Which is why they focus so strongly on childhood indoctrination. If you can introduce that insidious mental poison into a child's mind uncritically at a very, very early age, it is really, really difficult to get it out again. Religion is child abuse. It's human abuse, really. It's a means of pushing complete bullshit on innocent people and then making them feel guilty if they ever ask themselves if it was a good idea in the first place. It is not a good idea, and this is why, whenever I get the inevitable question, well, why do atheists talk about religion so much? Well, it's the same reason that people talk about racism and sexism and murder and all of that. Because it's evil. Because it harms us all with its very existence. The more people who buy into it, the worse it gets for absolutely everyone. Fuck religion. This is pure self-defense. And living a life yourself that is uh, in line with that gospel, not contradicting the message that we preach by the way we, we treat one another, by the way that we live. We want to, we want to, you know, we, we can't, we can't be the gospel. We're not the gospel, but our lives should be an implication of the power of the gospel, what the gospel does to redeem sinners. Um, nothing. Because this has come up before, too. 
Theists are vastly overrepresented in prison intake records. And remember, that's intake. That's not prison conversions. That's what you report on your way into prison so that they can provide you religious services. And by the same metric, atheists are vastly underrepresented. The religious are overrepresented. We are underrepresented. We are just better people than they are. We just are. We make better Christians than the Christians do because we can actually think for ourselves, whereas they allow some silly book and a ridiculous clergy to tell them how to behave. And the worst bit is, they don't even understand what the hell they're doing wrong because they have no clue how reality actually functions. They think God represents morality, and that's just patently absurd. It's no wonder that you've got Christians blowing up abortion clinics and Muslims flying airplanes into buildings and strapping on bomb vests. They have no clue how morality actually functions. They figure if somebody tells them that a magic man in the sky told them to do it, they'll do it, no questions asked. These people are dangerous, and the less capable of critical thought that they are, and they're hardly capable of that now, the more dangerous they become. So those things, I mean, that, that's all that you can do, relying upon the Lord, trusting in Him to do what only He can do, which is change the heart. Which is why that guy's kid is probably going to stay an atheist, because these people are just downright dumb. Again, it's why they fail so miserably, because they don't even know what they're fighting for. They expect some magic man in the sky to run out and fight their battles for them, because they're just little children with little tiny brains. And it just doesn't work that way, sorry. The more educated people get, the less need they have for any of this emotion-laden crap. They can just deal with reality as it is, not as they desperately wish that it was, and this is why Christianity is dying in the Western world. It's why church attendance is at its lowest point ever. Ever. It's why more and more advanced nations are seeing Christianity dip below the 50% mark, because Christians have got nothing. They really don't. It's why videos like this are so utterly ridiculous. It's trying to appeal to the emotionally frail who have nothing of value to say. They need to have an imaginary friend to stand up for them because it's something they obviously can't do on their own. I mean, really, how embarrassing is that? Certainly a lot more than they're willing to admit. God bless you. Thereafter, he just goes into a lot of self-promotion, and you will notice there's an awful lot of that in a lot of these videos. They're all out there trying to sell their wares to the stupid gullible people, but we'll just skip over all that because we don't care. Honestly, the more I watch things like this, the more I fear for the future of humanity. I mean, we're winning, but that takes time. These people are just so utterly abhorrent and pathetic, and either they're getting more violent and aggressive, or they're becoming more passive and ridiculous. The one thing most religious people aren't doing is getting any smarter, because all of the people who are getting smarter are the ones going, yeah, fuck this religious shit, we're going away, we're going to become atheists. And yeah, the fact that anybody remains, that's kind of sad, isn't it? Maybe it ought to change, but this represents a failing in humanity that we really need to collectively get over. We, as human beings, have to get better. It's happening bit by bit, but certainly not fast enough. Meanwhile, we've got this um, garbage. Get down on your knees and kiss your imaginary friend in the skies behind and hope that something happens. And if not, well, it's not your fault because you're so utterly powerless and pathetic that you can't do anything on your own. You're not just powerless, but let's be honest, you're brainless. And that's kind of the issue. Maybe the problem is that you're not getting better. Maybe the problem is you're not getting smarter. Maybe you should give that a shot. Sure the hell couldn't hurt.